do you do? Storyteller here, back with another of my weekly journals. I know I haven't been doing game videos in between these, but I actually did uh, record a game. I just haven't edited it yet, so I'm, I'm gonna get to that really soon. I promise. But I, I am playing another game, I just I need to actually edit it and upload it, so look forward to that. In the meantime, let's see, I have more notes, sorry of what's happened this week. Now I don't remember everything just because my brain's a little bit all cuckoo from the hours I've been working. Again, 60 hours a week. But we're not gonna talk about that. It's my day off. Let's see. Um, early on this week I met with my friend again, uh, the one I'm planning the youth event with. I believe I talked about this. We're planning just a young adult night um, for people to get together to hang out, we're gonna make it a pizza night, um, games, I don't know why I did that, it, we're having pizza. I don't know. Anyway, um, but yeah, pizza night, games, um, uh, music, something like that. Just getting together with people of our own age group, trying to break through that, um, barrier that we kind of all have. Um, so yeah, just gonna mark things off as I go. Let's see. Um, oh, the uh, the Hick Chief is officially coming up in December. I believe the 22nd is his flight. It's either the 22nd or the 23rd. I keep forgetting because it, we keep getting the dates mixed up, mixed up. But I'm really excited. He'll be coming up north. And the our other friend who has decided to be known as the Lonely Chicken. Yes, you heard me correctly. The Lonely Chicken. Um, everyone has a nickname on my channel because I don't use real names on here, but yeah, that's his name, apparently. Um, th he's coming up too, so we have um, a lot of people. Let let's see if I can name all the people by their nicknames. We have my parents, which are obviously the Princess and the Reaper. We have the Southward Angel coming back up north with her husband, the Wandering Knight, and coming up, um, not with them, but from the same place as them, are the that Hick Chief, um, the Lonely Chicken, and then here we will hopefully be having the Wandering Knight's brother, the Vampire. It's a long story why he got nicknamed that. He probably wouldn't even remember why, but I remember, so that's all that matters. And then me, of course, the storyteller's ghost. That's a lot of nicknames to have to remember, but so far, I think yeah, that, I think that's it, as far as I know. But yeah, so the tickets are booked, at least for him. Um, Southwood Angel and Wandering Knight, uh, kind of slackers, waiting until the last minute to uh, to book their tickets, but. His are all booked, taken care of, um, and uh, the plan is he'll fly up here. I think I talked about this, but he'll fly up here and then we're going to drive back together so I can have my car down there because I'm going to be moving in the beginning of January, officially. Yeah, it's all settled now. Like I, I haven't talked about it much just because it hasn't been quite settled, but officially, here it is. Um, the beginning of January, right after Christmas time, uh, Chief and I are driving back to Texas together. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna stay with the Southern Angel and Wandering Night for as long as it takes me to get an apartment, which only should be a few days, hopefully. <laughs> but as soon as I get an apartment, I'm also uh, getting another job down there. I'm gonna get right into it as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, pick up probably the same hours I'm doing here, the overnight shift, and pick up as many hours as I can do. And, yeah, so, get a job, get into an apartment, and start anew. I mean, it'll be a brand new start, and it'll be awesome. I cannot wait, but a lot of, lot to do in the time between now and December, uh, yeah, December, because we'll be leaving at the end of December. It's the beginning of January when we leave, so to have everything ready by then and with it being Christmas time, it's a little bit crazy, so that's why I've been working this far in advance. I mean, 
I've been packing up stuff, taking stuff down from here, getting rid of stuff. We just had a big tag sale to get rid of a lot of stuff. Um, been doing shopping for stuff for the apartment. Just a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff to do. But yeah, so... Let's see. Oh, this week, yay for news, talking about my job. I got a raise. I'm not going to say how much because I don't like to, you know, gloat or brag or anything like that, but, you know. But it was, it was a decent raise, and for how short a time I've been there, yay! Yay! It really helps, because every bit helps. Also at work, um, you can see I have blue hair today. No, it is not permanent hair dye. You're not going to get used to this. It is chalk spray. I have about eight different colors that I've been interchanging at work. You spray it in, it's chalk based, and then when you go in the shower it washes out and leaves no trace of it. Just completely gone. So every day I've been doing different colors based on the outfit I'm wearing and people are going crazy for it. Um, especially at work. Um, people love it and they'll walk by me and be like, wasn't your hair pink yesterday? I'm like, what are you talking about? No, it's always been blue. And then the next day it'll be like green. And they'll be like, no, wait, your hair color changed again. They're like, I'm like, oh, what, what are you talking about? Most people aren't quite that stupid, but a few of them are. But it's awesome. People keep asking me how my hair color keeps changing. And it's so much fun to tell them, oh, it's just a spray. Just spray it in. They're like, I want to try that. I'm like, go for it. It's fun. It's fun. Try it. <laughs> Let's see. Also at work, I... I have a lot of, uh, I don't, I don't, don't want to say it like that. I have occasions where people um, will hit on me or flirt with me at work, and I don't usually talk about that on here just because I don't, one, I don't want to upset other people who are hearing this, and two, I don't really like to talk about negative things on my channel, but I'm going to talk about this one just because it kind of struck me off guard. This wasn't a flirting occasion, this was a psycho. I have a lot of friends down on the shipping dock. Now, I'll talk about this first. Um, I was up in the induction, which is basically just opening totes and scanning all the stuff that's in the totes. Like, it'll have brake parts, or it'll have, uh, you know, wiring parts, things like that. Small parts that need to be scanned. I'm working up there, and uh, I feel so cool. There's this guy who's tough tough guy. He looks like B.A. Barakas from the A-Team. Like, he's a he tough guy. So, he comes up to me, and he's like, now, th this is really funny to me, because we have a big culture gap in the factory, where a lot of them, we have, like, half the company are people from Africa and Jamaica, and the other half are people from, like, Dominican Republic and things like that. So we have like a Spanish community and an African American community on different ends of the building. Like they're kind of clustered together. I don't know if that was intentional. I don't know why it's like that, but they kind of stick stick with the people of their own culture, which is fine, just as long as, you know, that's not being like forced upon them. <laughs> that would be weird. Uh not weird, you know what I mean. But yeah, so what my point was, um, the people who are like from Dominican Republic, people from more of a, a Spanish descent or a Puerto Rican descent, anything, wh however you would label that, I don't like labels, but the Spanish community all refer to me as their little mommy. So whenever I'm through there, hey, little mommy, oops, sorry. Little mommy, oh, hey, little mommy, you make us labels. It's, it's adorable. And then when I get to the other side of the building, which is where the uh, African, Jamaican, that, that sort of uh, culture are from, they don't call me little mommy, they call me little sister. So it's hilarious. When I'm on this side of the building, I'm little mommy. And when I'm on this side of the building, I'm little sister. And I was on this side of the building this time, and I had this guy, like I said, looks like big, tough, like B.A. Baracus. He comes up to me, and he's got a pile of, like, chains, like, necklace chains in his hands. He's like, little sister, you got small hands. Can you untangle these chains? And he takes over the work I'm doing at the desk, and I just sit there, and I untangle all of his chains for him. And then he puts them on, he's like, thank you, thank you. And then he calls over one of his other friends, 
and one of his friends has tangled chains too. He's like, can can you untangle my chains? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so that was annoying, but at the same time it was kind of cool because now I have really tough buddies. I have like two bodyguards that are friends with me because I untangled their chains from them. I, I'm just very proud of that. What was I getting at? Oh, I was uh, getting at uh, people in the warehouse, but um, there's this running joke in the warehouse. Uh, there's We call them center riders. They're fork trucks. Like, uh, they're pallet trucks. So they have the forks on the end and they pick up the pallets. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, but the running joke is that whenever we see one of the trucks walking, uh, driving by and we're on foot, we'll run out in front of the truck and yell, HIT ME PLEASE! PUT ME OUT OF MY MISERY! HIT ME! And you'll stand in front of the truck and the person will rub the truck at you. Like, they'll, they'll, no joke, they'll come pretty close to you, but it's all in fun, because... HIT ME PLEASE! <laughs> and my misery! just run out in front of the truck and they know they everybody knows i mean we're all on all in on the joke and we're fairly cautious i mean we know not to run out in front of people who aren't paying attention but you kind of know who you can run out in front of and know that they're gonna stop so a little bit reckless maybe but my point is i'm in on that and i'll do it i'll if if i see one of my buddies on the the fork trucks driving by i'll go cautiously run out in front of one of their trucks and be like hit me please hit me hit me hit me and of course none of them do but there's this one guy he's a little bizarre and when i say a little bizarre i thought he was a little bizarre before this after this i think he's psycho I don't know if it's a funny kind of psycho or a I need to be worried about you kind of psycho. But yeah, um, hope nobody gets upset by this or, or concerned by this. But uh, yeah, um, hold on, I'm kind of a bit distracted. But oh, I did the thing where I run out in front of his food truck and I'm like, hit me, please, please, put me out of my misery, hit me, hit me. And he slows down, and he gets off, and he's like, I would not hit you. I would not hit you and kill you. Because that is not how I would kill you. I know how I would kill you. And he starts going into how he would murder me if he were going to murder me. And he goes into detail. He's thought, he's thought this through. He tells me, and now I'm going, skimming some details just because I, I want to be prompt. Like, this took several minutes of how he dissected how he would murder me. But it started with, I would be out in the parking lot, walk into my car. He would hit me with his car, but not kill me. Throw me in his car, drive me to my bank, and force me to empty my bank account. Then... He would keep me alive, and you guys know I have the rose tattoo. He said he would, and he's pointing, and he's got like a pen, and he's pointing and showing me where he would do this. He says, I would cut off your tattoo and peel it off, and I would tack it to the bulletin board in work so everybody would know that it was you, and everybody would know you were dead. But he would, he's showing me how, he's like, I would cut off your tattoo and peel it off and stick it to the, I'm like, and stick it to the bulletin board so everybody will know you're dead. And then he would dispose of my body. So, yeah, a little bit psycho. He's a little bit psycho. Um, but yeah, so... I don't know if that's the funny kind of, ah, ha, ha, yeah, don't do that kind of psycho, or if it's the I need to be concerned kind of psycho. So, yeah, that was fun. Um, but yeah, so, uh, da, da, da. also this week, um, I thought I was getting sick, but apparently it was just allergies, because this is my allergy season, but it felt like I was getting sick, um, but I went, in the middle of the night, I get out at like 3.34, I drove out to Walmart at like 4 o'clock in the morning, 
got stuff to make soup, came back, and um, Chief and I FaceTimed while I made soup at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I made amazing chicken noodle soup at 4 o'clock in the morning. It was fantastic. But yeah, that's how crazy I am. I make soup in the middle of the night. But yeah, we keep we talk late at night because that's pretty much the only time we have to talk because I'm a night owl now. I'm I'm usually not awake during the days, but um wow, brain. But yeah, he stays up and talks with me and it's fantastic and we have so much fun. But by the morning we're both dead and today I'm at like church. I got barely sleep. Just because I go to church, I have to get up early to have to be ready because I help out before church. I don't just go to church, I have to help out, but, um, I'm like, I'm, I'm running the camera, you guys know, like I do security and camera, um, I'm doing the camera and I'm like nodding off as I'm trying to like prime my eyes open to watch the pastor and to keep the camera focused on him and I'm just like, uh. <laughs> so... I need to get a little bit more sleep, but I'll be fine. I'm, I'll take a nap a little bit later, and I'll be fine. Um, and today, after that, I say I need to relax, but I've been out bebopping. I've been getting stuff, uh, necessities for the apartment, and this is how crazy I am. You guys will see how much of a planner I am. I plan things way out in advance. Um, I've been Christmas shopping. Yes, I Christmas shop in... I was... I was gonna say October. It's technically October. I mean, there's one day left of September, so yes, I am Christmas shopping in October. That is how crazy I am. So anyway, I've got people very anxious to talk to me for some reason, so I'm gonna have to let you guys go a little bit early, but I just wanted to keep you guys informed on what's going on, and I am gonna be trying to make more game videos. I, like I said, I recorded one. I just need to finish editing it and upload it. But that is on the way, and more games are on the way, so uh, that'll be very soon. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!